Now, if you've just moved in with your partner in lockdown, you definitely need to listen to this uh, next chat because we have our consumer lawyer, Aisha Nair, in. Um, and it's all about the conversations you need to have when you've moved in because, actually, there's a lot that can go wrong, isn't there, Aisha? The reason you're asking me like I'm in a bad relationship, but I'm in a very happy one. <laughs> um, I feel the need to say that because my husband's probably watching. Um, OK, so where do we start, start with relationship advice? Well, first of all, I, I'm not going to give you any advice on relationships, but what I can give you is legal advice and the legal practicalities involved in moving in together. So your starting point is, are you actually living together? You might have made this quick decision on Saturday night when the announcement was made, let's move in. Yeah. And so you're at the stage now where you are now living together. Or it might have been a gradual realisation over a period of time where you've looked at each other on Saturday night and thought, we're living together. So we, we are cohabiting, and where do we actually legally stand? Remember, if you're adult enough to move in together, you're adult enough to have serious conversations about legal impl implications of what you're doing. Married couples have legal rights. Cohabitees don't have the same rights as married couples. So it's really important right now that you know where you legally stand. So what do you need to talk about then? What's the most important thing? The house that you're living in, first of all. Think about the house that you're living in, how... It, say, for example, you move into my house, Steph. We look at, do I own it or is it being rented? So if it's rented, then look at the tenancy agreement itself. First of all, can I actually move you in? Am I allowed to do that? Do I need to get permission from my landlord? Your landlord might want a new tenancy agreement drawn up altogether, so you become party to it. So if I default or either of us default, he can come after both of us. But the more complex and complicated and worrying one is if you own the property. If I let you move in, do you acquire what lawyers call a beneficial entitlement? Oh. Financial entitlement within that property. Regardless of who the legal owner is, if you move in, do you acquire any financial rights? That all depends on what the party's intentions are. So if when you move in, I say to you, Steph, treat this house as yours, it's now our house, we're both in this together, and you rely on that to your detriment, and you then start, for example, paying the mortgage some months. I might say, lose my job, and you say, no, I'm in a job, I'll pay the mortgage for the next six months, Aisha, you just take it easy. Does that then give you a financial entitlement? It could. If, for example, you go off and you do a big DIY project for me, so you go and buy all the building... Um, work and you get all the equipment and then you do this build for me as well, that could give you a financial right because you've done that relying on the fact that I said to you, this is now our property. So just be very careful and analyse what discussions you're having. So, I mean, how do you actually protect yourself legally then? Because actually there's a lot more to think about than just the kind of romanticised view of, oh, yeah, we'll live together in lockdown. You could end up losing part of your house, couldn't you? You could indeed. And that's why it's so important to have these discussions. So if you're moving in with me, I need to think about, right, we need to have this chat. Are you acquiring any kind of rights to my property by moving in? And then you, when you're moving in, you need to think, well, I'm giving up my own house to move in with you. Do I... Am I acquiring any legal rights? So have that discussion and sit round the table and just be honest, open and frank with each other. And then when you've reached an agreement, you can go along to a lawyer and we can draft for you what's called a cohabitation agreement, which sets out the legal implications of us living together our finances, our assets, and what we intend to do if, God forbid, we split up. Now, cost of those, it depends on your local area, and they're pretty much enforceable throughout the UK, but check your local area. See a solicitor and get costings. They start at around £750. Depends, though, on how complex our you know, situation is. Can be more expensive. But it, what I will tell you is it can save you a lot of heartache in the long run if we know we've got that in the first place. And, and is it expensive to get a cohabitation agreement, then? Start off at around £750 upwards. Right, okie doke. Um, if but, you've already moved but in... But, for me, if you're going to take part of my house, I think that £700 pounds is well you're spent You're assuming money. that our relationship isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that yet. I don't know that well, Steph, yet. <laughs> already arguing. <laughs> <laughs> We're already arguing. <laughs> if you've already moved in with someone? Like, for example, now we're already in lockdown, so there might be people now looking at each other thinking, oh, hang on, are we too late? <laughs> Look, there's n you're never too late to get your legal affairs in order, so now is the time to just analyse what discussions we have actually had and then sit down again, come to some kind of agreement, and a solicitor can still draft that cohabitation agreement for you. It's never too late.
Is, so that's the property then. Okay. Is there anything else we need to worry about? Like if you're paying, I don't know, the household bills or contributing to anything else? Yeah, it's not well, It's not just the washing up that you need to worry about. There's lots of other things, as you quite rightly said. So bills, for example. Remember any bills, contracts, agreements in your name. If they're in your name alone, you are responsible for payment of them, regardless of the fact that we're both getting a benefit from them. So now might be the time to start splitting the bills, put, putting them in both your names. It might be a time for you to have a joint set up a joint account. Furniture is another big one as well. So, for example, if I go out and I buy a dining table or a big sofa, now, if I gift that to you as the owner of the house, it remains yours if our relationship goes pear-shaped. If I don't gift it to you, then, and I assume it's still mine, again, have the conversation. I can't stress that enough. Have the conversation. Then, if we do split up, I can take that with me. And if we've both bought it together, it's split according to the ratios that we have. Yeah, I'm just, I should say, Max, aren't you? Um, Max, haven't you just moved your partner in in lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is so funny. And she's just bought a sofa. We're, we're just about to buy a sofa. <laughs> we literally, two nights ago, went online and looked at sofas, and I, I met him in January. He asked me out at the end of Jan. We'd started dating, and I've got to say, he's an amazing guy, by the way, and we adore each other massively. Um, we'd started dating in February, and I locked down with him in March. I sold my house in July and I've now moved in. It was a crazy <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, oh my god, and now we're buying a sofa. <laughs> it was in it was in like March. Um, I got the call from Mum and she was like, oh, okay, so just a just a few quick things. Um, so I've met a guy, I've moved in with him, and I've sold the house. <laughs> okay. So, Aisha, what are your top tips then so, for people like Max? <laughs> right, well, that's a really common situation. You need to go home and have some frank and honest oh. discussions with each other tonight. <laughs> conversations I've got to say go on um, what else so some frank and honest conversations have those frank and honest discussions make it clear if you want to give him ownership of no no pressure here I'm sure he's watching as well if you want to give him some kind of ownership say it if you don't again be honest and say it again look whatever you agree legally <laughs> whatever you agree legally. it's your house no, no, it's, not. Not. no it's not it's his house all oh, right oh, it's it's his house. House. <laughs> take it <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, Ian, never it. expect you to get this right. How do you split a sofa? Anyway, <laughs> on that note, let's uh, let's give Aisha a massive round of applause for that. Thank you.